On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a uh, one, a blessed and wonderful Sunday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So now the morning I'm a peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps, uh, to the name uh, Sunday the day when some of the ones and ones them out there traverse over there to church. So whilst doing so, please remember on the spot news media as loyal viewers and subscribers in your immediate prayers. You definitely see how Jamaica are run right and also you know for sure so we need that to know more than ever and of course i don't know said so today is the official red rice and roaster day yeah man may i tell you so to all of the regular ones and ones them out there in the kitchen i deal with the finger licking chicken blessings upon this sunday so another day above ground my peeps is most definitely a lot to be grateful for so while it's out there traversing these streets from Moran Point to Negril Point, safe travel, pan the gravel, and as always, my peeps, look out on the corner, yeah, because what? The old dirty corner boy, them. Always out there. Alerts. <laughs> yeah, man. So, I'm going to share a video. We don't know before we jump into this morning's story. So, watch the video. Today, I attended a free Palestine protest. It was a part of a global movement standing in solidarity with Palestine. Jamaica was just one of many countries around the world whose citizens mobilized to demand a ceasefire in Palestine. Since the start of the war, some 10,000 Palestinians have died. Many of them were children. Today's protest had specific requests for the Jamaican government. These include that they disclose state deals with Israel, an official condemnation of Israel's actions, that Jamaica breaks ties with Israel, and recognition of the state of Palestine. The protest was organized by LANS, the Left Alliance for National Democracy and Socialism. It was a pretty good turnout and it felt good knowing that we were part of a global initiative led by like-minded citizens fighting for justice for Palestinians who have suffered by the hands of an oppressive system for decades. I encourage everyone who sees this video to educate themselves about what's been happening between the two countries. And to see that today's protest was a reminder that oppressive systems take many forms and that we are historically not far removed from the atrocities happening in Palestine. Now my peeps, after watching that heartfelt video, what's the first thing that came to your minds? Now as for me, as a Jamaican, living in such harsh crime and violent conditions on a day-to-day -day basis and I see my Jamaican people marching, protesting in solidarity with what is happening in Israel and Gaza whilst I sympathize with what is going on over there I'm wondering why we don't see these same marches against crime and violence that has been continuously perpetrated against the regular members of Chan Public. Yesterday evening's story, I spoke about the triple knockings and clappings along Hagley Park Road that took the life of this six-year-old child. She was slaughtered and left for dead in the streets like a dog by criminal elements in Jamaica. We have not heard or seen a public outcry. This precious little one right here on our screen and her 
grandmother was taken out in a hail of bullets and left for dead in the streets of Jamaica. No public outcry. No protest whatsoever. No condemnation of the brutal slain of our own. But we can come together collectively to go protest against something that has absolutely nothing to do with us as Jamaicans. And as I stated, whilst I sympathize with what is happening between Gaza and Israel, my issue is why we don't put the same efforts in curbing our crime problem. Why we don't see the public outcry, the marches against crime and violence in our country. Our lives clearly don't matter. But we care more so for the white man in the white country fighting them white biblical war. Really sad. Poor I may I tell him my peeps. The thing rough. Yeah man. But these three presently on your screen has officially been identified. Our precious little six year old girl has since been identified as Ariana Salmon. Her grandmother have been identified as 42 year old Mari Salmon. Both of a Howard Avenue address in Kingston. And the man who is said to be the main target has since been identified as 34 year old Michael Smith. A fourth person was also injured in that attack. But that person luckily did not succumb to injuries and was treated for his injuries. Now it is said that it was just an unfortunate circumstances as Ariana and her grandmother Mary was just casualties of war. They were not the intended target but as always the criminal elements just fired wantonly and hitting persons who has nothing to do with them and their intended target. But as I stated earlier no public outcry, no march, no empathy or sympathy towards our very own. But we are out here marching against what is happening over there in Israel versus Gaza. Yeah, man. Now over there in the parish of Chulani, a man end up get caught up. And lost his life no longer among the land of the living by a policeman during an alleged confrontation outside of a nightclub in Falmouth, Trelawney on Saturday morning. Now the man is presently on your screen. He has since been identified as Adju Hall. He's of a Scarlet Hall address in Trelawney. It is reported that him get can up after he attacked a cop who is said to be a constable of the Stoar Town Police Station. So reports indicate that sometime around 5.10 a.m., two men were among patrons outside a nightclub when an altercation developed between Hall and another man. The constable intervened and tried to separate both men when Hall reportedly began punching him in the face repeatedly. It was further reported that the policeman pulled his private firearm and fired three shots, hitting Hall in the right side of his body. It is said that Hall was assisted to the Falmouth Hospital where he succumbed to injuries. No residents 
in that particular community is refuting the claim of the police constable and stating that he took the life of their community member innocently as there was no fights, no punch in the face. None of the sort happened. They are saying that the police officer is a cold-blooded murderer. Yeah, man. But what I find interesting, they are refuting the claim but not stating what actually happened. They are just saying that nothing of the sort happened as it relates to what the police officer stated. So if you're listening to the voice of Andy Spot News Media right now and you know the actual story, let's hear your viewpoint because obviously this report that I just read is the viewpoint of the police. So one of you regular members of Chan Public who saw the actual knockings and clappings Link on the spot news media after the ear. I make all a reasoning. Yeah, man. Now, over there in the troubled, war torn, crime riddled St. James Police Division, a joint operation between the St. James Police and the Jamaica Defense Force led to the seizure of two high powered firearms during a targeted operation in Salt Spring Road in the parish on Saturday. You know, say from what day I see police them do some decent spot of work up at Salt Spring there. Yeah, man. So we have to commend them when time we see them put in efforts and a reap some sort of success. Now, reports from the police suggest that sometime about 4 p.m., the joint forces were acting on information conducting a targeted raid in Scott's Yard in Salt Spring, St. James. It is reported that while the security forces were conducting checks, they were fired on by criminal elements and of course, the lawmen returned gunfire. So after the smoke clear and the battle was won, everything subsided. Checks were made after the area was secured by the police. One AK-47 assault rifle and a Glock 19 pistol and several assorted rounds of ammunition were seized. The police are also stating that one man was taken into custody in connection with the seizure. The police stated that a manhunt has been launched to apprehend other men who were involved in the shooting. They are also urging members of John Public to come forward with any information that may assist the investigation. Yeah, man. So another decent spot of work again by the squad of them. So watch this now, my peeves. The last thing that we are going to talk about is the Independent Commission of Investigations that Indicom is urging members of the security forces to use less lethal force during confrontations with people who are deemed to be mentally ill. Now, the Indicom Commissioner, Hugh Faulkner, says there have been instances where Deadly force was not warranted. Well, before me play a clip from Hugh Faulkner, let me say this. The government of Jamaica need for the better because police are not supposed to deal with mentally challenged people. We're supposed to have trained personnel to be deployed to deal with people who suffer mental condition. They should have trained persons from the Bellevue Hospital and any other mental facility who is training, handling and dealing with these persons. Remember Jamaican police, you know, not really much different from a soldier per se in a first world country. Because what Jamaican police are dealing with is not necessary policing, so to speak. They have to deal with a wide range of just about everything. So, on the need for lessen the burden 
Make the police then focus on fighting crime. Yeah, man. And get trained persons and have them on standby and deploy them when we have instances of mentally ill people flaring up. But anyway, we are going to hear from the Indicom Commissioner as it relates to these type of incidents. So listen to you, Faulkner. Yeah, man. We have always been encouraging the use of less lethal weapons and methods to disable the any advance and there are other instruments other than the firearm that could be utilized and there are tactical steps that could be taken in approaching someone with a knife or an ice pick so now my peeps as it relates to what the indicom commissioner Hugh Fartner just stated What's your take on what he just said? Drop some comments in the comment section as it relates to that. Now, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.